Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakakodash. I'd like to give double honors, Shalom, and salutations to all the elders, bishops, and apostles of GMS. I'd like to give a double Shalom, salutations, and honor to all the 144, the hopeful elect. And I'd like to give a Shalom. To all you brothers and sisters out there who believe in this knowledge, this truth, and this understanding. Okay? Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father, which means He to be, or He exists, which the world ignorantly calls Lord or God. Okay? And Yahweh Shai being the true name of the beloved Heavenly Son. Okay? And His names mean He the Savior, or He the Deliverer, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay? This is your brother, Hawashai, coming back at you with another lesson. Okay? And in regards to uh, current events, okay, we're going to talk about uh, the whole war over there in Israel. Okay? Now, the small heads claim that they're the people. Okay. That's their claim. That that's their land. But if you read Isaiah 14, the Heavenly Father is supposed to set his people in his land by his hand, by his doing. Okay. And then there's certain uh, characteristics that's supposed to happen. Okay. When he set his people in his land. Okay. They're supposed to have a king. They're supposed to have servants. Okay. It's supposed to be a land of righteousness. And everyone is to flow into that land. They're supposed to bring their goods unto the people. They're supposed to have servants. I mean, it's it's supposed to be the 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 the, the pinnacle of the earth, okay? And the people that's in that land, they do not meet the characteristics of Isaiah 14, okay? Okay? And just, just to show, okay, on social media, they posted how they got there, okay? Okay, so without further ado, we're going to watch this video. And then after we watch this video, we're going to get into these scriptures, okay? Because when you get right down to it, it's the land of the, of the Heavenly Father. It's His land, okay? It belongs to Him. And, and He promised it to the children of Abraham, okay? Okay? So that's why, you know, through the scriptures, you know... Certain people fit the description of the Heavenly Father's people and certain people don't. Okay? And and by this little snippet of video, we it, it should be clear after watching this video who is the Heavenly Father's people and who's not the Heavenly Father's people. Okay? I have to talk like that because you know how YouTube do. Okay? I ain't trying to get the video taken down. But then again, I, I don't I don't give a damn. You know, you just gotta keep doing this work. Those of you who are are are, are in this knowledge, this truth, you you know how I go. Okay. Without further ado, let's watch this video. And I'm gonna say fair use, fair use, fair use, okay? You know, just fair use for educational purposes, all right? And here it is, the Balfour Declaration. Balfour Declaration, and, and I have a copy here. And I wonder if I could possibly ask you to read it for us. Yes, indeed. Yep. So this is uh, one of the Rothschilds, right? And his, I think his granddaddy, a great granddaddy, uh, drafted up the Balfour Declaration, which was to, uh, well, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you, let him say it, Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to put on my spectacles to make sure I read it accurately. 
His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment of Palestine as a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. Yours, Arthur Balfour. Now, did you, did you understand that in its entirety? Okay. It was a declaration to establish a home for the said Jews somewhere where Palestine was already at. Okay. And I know it's not in this video, but reportedly this particular Rothschild family had purchased that land over there from God knows who because they didn't have a right to it. Okay. Nobody had uh, uh, ownership of it except for the Israelites. Okay. Okay. Because they were they were pushed out of that land, okay. Okay, they they were they were uh, pushed out of that land. So well, I'm 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 gonna play it again so you understand what it's saying because they gave a declaration for the said Jews to be over there when they had people already over there. And here it is, the Balfour Declaration. Balfour Declaration, um, and I have a copy here. And I wonder if I could possibly ask you to read it for us. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to put on my spectacles to make sure I read it accurately. His Majesty's Government view with favor the establishment of Palestine as a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, or the rights and political status enjoyed by Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. Yours are... Right, Arthur Balfour. And that's where you get the Balfour Declaration, which um, shifted Jews from uh, Europe, about 6,000 Jews because it was over there starving. Okay. The Balfour Declaration was in 1917. Okay. There was a famine in Europe. Okay. In the 1920s. Okay. The people was over there dying. So they needed another place to go where they can live. Okay. That's that's the truth of the matter. Okay. But what what did it all that 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 ain't that ain't important. Okay. What's important is these scriptures because the heavenly father, you know, <laughs> he see everything and he got them pegged, right? The heavenly father see everything and he got them pegged, okay? Okay. So let's get to it. The Heavenly Father see everything. Okay. Now, the book of Ezekiel was written a long time ago. The book of Ezekiel is a prophecy. Okay. As a matter of fact, the, the whole Bible is full of prophecy. Because the Heavenly Father deal with the prophets. Okay. The, the Heavenly Father would send his word. OK, and to warn the people, or tell the people, you know. So the, the basically, really, the whole book is is a prophecy, you know, allegories and, and stories and parables. OK, but dealing with this particular instance, this is a prophecy, you know. So. Let's get into it. We're going to go to Ezekiel 36, right? Ezekiel 36 and 5, right? And it says right there, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, 
God, Yahweh, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy, verse 6, prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, right? Because he said, prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel. So this is a future prophecy. So the heavenly father already knew that this was going to happen. Okay. That people that didn't belong there was going to. Uh, uh, go into that land prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills to the rivers and to the valleys thus said the Lord Yahweh behold I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because ye have borne the shame of the heathen okay and what he's talking about is 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 um the heathen uh, taking the land. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, 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 let's get another one. Salakia. We're going to go to. Now let's go to Ezekiel. Uh, 30. Yeah. Ezekiel 35. Right. Ezekiel 35. And we're going to go to the 10th verse. Right. Right. It says, uh, because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it. Whereas the Lord Yahweh was there. And what 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 is one of the two? Well, the the the, the Rothschilds or the wicked elite. Right. They they pretty much own uh, 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 Britain and Europe and all like that, you know. Uh, all those nations up there, right? But, you know, they also wanted that particular nation too, okay? This is this is still a prophecy by the Ezekiel because if you go up to the first verse, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, okay? And then if you skip down to the 10th verse, okay, the heavenly father knew what was in their hearts. It says, because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it. Whereas the Lord was there. Right. Meaning that that's that belongs to the heavenly father. His eyes are always there. And they knew that they knew they knew that that land uh, belonged to the Israelites and the Israelites are the heavenly father's uh, chosen people. OK. Okay, so let's 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 prove it. Okay, so like yeah, bear with me. We're gonna go to uh, Ezra, Second Ezra, right, chapter five, and we're gonna start at the twenty fourth verse, right. And if you uh, if you go down to verse twenty four, this is talking about um, the heavenly Father's uh, favorite things. Okay. It says uh, second Ezra five and 24. And it says of all the lands of the whole earth. I'm sorry. So like you of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen the one pit. OK. And of all the flowers there of one lily. OK. But back to the first part of the verse, it says of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen one pit. And what is that? Well, we know it's not talking about the people. It's talking about the actual earth, earth, because on the 27th verse is talking about among all the multitudes of people that has gotten the one people. OK, and that people are uh, the Israelites. Right. It says of and among all the multitudes of people that has gotten the one people and. Unto this people whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. And it's talking about the Israelites. Okay. You so-called black Latinos and Native Americans and all you people 
who heritage go back to a so-called black, Latino, and Native American on your father's side. It has nothing to do with the mother, okay? Okay, you in my videos, I'm going to always say that, okay? I'm going to say it as Apostle Toha said, say it to agnosium, okay? But back to the point, okay? Out of the whole earth, okay, the Heavenly Father has one favorite land, okay? And these wicked elites know that. The wicked elite read the Bible too. Okay? So let's 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 uh let's get to the point, right? Uh da 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 da. Let's go to Deuteronomy, okay, chapter eleven. Okay. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, right? We're going to start. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, starting at the 10th verse, it says, For the land, whether thou goes in to possess it, it is not as the land of Egypt, from which ye came out, where, where thou sowest thy seed, and waters it with thy foot as a garden of herbs, right? So th this scripture is saying a lot, okay? This scripture is saying a lot. It's making a distinguishment, okay? It, it's, it's, it's saying that your land is not Egypt, okay? Okay, so that's making also making a distinguishment between people, okay? Because Hamites lived in Egypt. We lived in Egypt too, but the Heavenly Father is giving us our own land, okay? Okay? Like I said, it also makes us a distinguishment between people because there's a misconception that uh, your so-called uh, black folks is the same as Africans, and that's not true. Okay? Okay? Verse 11 but the land whether ye go to possess it is the land of hills and valleys and drinketh water and drinketh water of the rain of heaven right so the heavenly father this particular land in which he talking about he blesses it okay he nourishes it a land which the the lord yahweh thy god careth for the eyes of the lord Yahweh, thy God, are always upon it from the beginning of the year even until the end of the year. Okay? So this particular land that the heavenly, uh, that the scriptures are talking about, right, is for the Israelites to possess, okay? And his he cared for that land. His eyes are always on that land. As we read in 2 Ezra, uh, Chapter 5 and 24, okay? He chosen him one land, okay? Then we come to Deuteronomy 11, okay? Uh, it's a land that uh, uh, the Heavenly Father, he careth for. His eyes uh, is always there. He's up on it. He he looks up on it from year to year, okay? And he watered with, with the rain of heaven, okay? Okay? Let's 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 find out what that particular land is, okay? We're gonna go to the book of Genesis, right? We're gonna go to Genesis fifteen, right? Genesis fifteen and eighteen, okay? Genesis fifteen and eighteen. It says, "In the same day, the Lord Yahweh made a covenant with Abraham, saying." Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river Salakia. It says, In the same day the Lord Yahweh made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Okay? Okay? So that's the Heavenly Father's land. So let's uh try to see if we could pull up a map right quick. So like you bear with me. 
No, it's not on that one. Yeah. So like here, bear with me. And this the land that the Heavenly Father's talking about. Okay. Probably can't get it all up on here. But pretty much. Okay. Uh, it won't scroll out for me. So from pretty much. Okay. So pretty much if you cut Iraq, slant it because right over here, let me scroll in. Okay. You, that's the Tigris. Okay. So pretty much right here, this right here, I don't know if I can, well, it says, Dewar Arazar, that's the river Euphrates, and it cuts through just say half of Iraq, okay? From Iraq, right? From Iraq all the way over to just say Cairo, okay? That's the land the Heavenly Father cares for, okay? From the middle of Iraq all the way to Cairo, okay? Just for uh, reference points, okay? That's the that's the heavenly Father's land, and that's who he care. That's who he care for. So these wicked elite has took the heavenly Father's land, okay? Like we read in uh, uh, Ezekiel thirty six and five, it took the heavenly. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's go to it, because that's the point, okay? Okay, Ezekiel 36 and 5, okay? It says, Therefore thus said the Lord God, Yahweh, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, okay? And against all Idumia. Idumia is the Greek, work, Greek way of saying Edom, okay? Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of their hearts, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey, okay? Okay? So the Heavenly Father already knew what was on their minds to do, okay? Okay? Let's get one more. Then we're going to close it because the point's been made, okay? That, long, that land belongs to the Heavenly Father, and he appointed it to the Israelites to, 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 to have, Okay? And this goes, just goes to show that they are, they are not the people that belong in that land. Either one of them. Either group. Okay? Now, some of the people among the group might be um, uh, Israelites because Israelites were scattered throughout the whole earth. Okay? But as a whole, all the people that's there, no. Okay? No. Okay? Let's get uh, Micah. Mike uh, 2, and uh, we're going to start at the ver first verse. It says, Woe unto them that devise iniquity and work it evil upon their bed. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in their power of their hand. Right. It's talking about the wicked elite. The guy you've seen in the video reading the Balfour Declaration. Right. Verse 2, and they covet fields and take them by violence. OK, because when they enacted that Balfour Declaration, right, when they enacted that, the Palestinian people that was already there, they they murdered and killed them. OK, like they do in a day and they cover fields and they take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house. OK. Even a man in his heritage. OK. They oppress the so-called black Latinos and Native Americans as well. Because that was, that was our house, okay? And they took our heritage. Because the, the Zionist goes back to uh, Khazar, okay? That's where they bloodline go back to. 
That's where they land at is is up in Khazar, which is uh, 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 up in Russia. OK. But they say they Jews. OK. They say they Jews. OK. OK. And they cover fields and they take them by violence and houses and take them away. OK. Because like I said earlier, the, the Israelites were pushed out of their land. OK. By who? The Romans. They take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house and even a man in his heritage. Therefore, thus said the Lord Yahweh, behold, against this family, I do devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. Neither shall ye go hardly for this time is evil. OK. OK. And what is he talking about? The up and coming destruction, the day the heavenly father returns to establish his kingdom. OK. And that just goes to show you if 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 the heavenly father is mad at these people for establishing his land. OK. That just goes to show that these are not the people. They don't meet the, the, the qualifications of Isaiah 14 and 1. Let's go to it. Okay, the book of Isaiah, we're going to go to 14. We ain't got to go far to, to make the point. Isaiah 14 and verse 1, okay? For the Lord, Yahweh, will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, okay? So none of these uh, 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 top wicked elite is not the heavenly father, okay? The Heavenly Father don't have to write up uh, uh, declarations and paperwork in order to move a people into their own land. Okay. For I for the Lord, Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Who is Israel? Israelites, so-called black Latinos and Native Americans. Okay. And set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. Who is the stranger? The other heathen. All the other nations. You go over there in, in, in Israel. They trying to push everybody out. Okay. So that, that, that they trying to bomb the Palestinians. You know, you don't have no Chinese, Japanese. Uh, 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 no other nation. They want to take over the whole land. Okay. And that's what the, the war is all about. Pretty much. Verse two. And the people shall take them. And what does that mean? The Israelites are going to take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, Yahweh, for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Now, the, the small hats, who were their captives? Who, 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 were, who were the small hats of captives? The 1948ers. The people who, was, who, who had the declaration in their favor. Who were their captives? Okay. Who were their oppressors? See, the Heavenly Father got, got them people paid. Okay? The Heavenly Father see everything. You, you, see, you ain't got to go in this Isaiah 14 to see that they are not the people. Okay? And, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein as that was made to serve. Talking about the people that's going over to the land. And when he established in them land, he's going to give them rest from their sorrow and from fear. And from the hard bondage when that was made to serve. Which goes back to Deuteronomy 28, 15 on, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15 on down. When it says your life going to hang in the balance. Okay. You should plant vineyards, but don't eat the grapes. You're going to be able to your houses and not live in them. That's bondage. Okay. 
You're going to return back to Egypt with ships. OK, roughly paraphrasing. OK. These are not the people. OK. And by them showing showing this, 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 this video, they, they, <laughs> they proving who they are. OK. The scriptures prove it and they're showing it. OK. All right. This is your brother, Howard Shy. With that, I hope you've been edified, okay? Until the next one. Shalom, shalom.